let us study the one more case array of two driven lambda by two elements that is n fire case now we will consider an n fire antenna system where we are having two driven elements and the length of those driven elements is lambda by two consider an array of two vertical lambda by 2 dipoles spaced at distance d the power is applied with equal magnitude and out of phase its meaning is that here we have two i should here we have two here we have two dipoles they are having a length lambda by 2 and the distance between them is d and these two dipoles are fed with equal magnitude and out of phase. For this, we have to calculate the field patterns, and the field pattern is existing in the horizontal plane and also in the vertical planes, and then the gain and all the parameters we have to calculate. Now let us calculate the field pattern. So let us consider the first case that is horizontal plane. The field intensity E1 the phi as a function of phi in the horizontal plane is that is we want to calculate the field intensity in the horizontal plane as a function of phi then it is given by e1 of phi is equal to k into i1 where i1 is a current flowing through this particular element and k is a constant which is involved in the distance d now next what we are doing supposed to do is that replacing each element by an isotropic source that is we are replacing these two elements by an isotropic source with a power feeding with a phase difference of 180 degree that is we are replacing these two dipoles by an isotropic source then we will apply a signal having a same magnitude and a phase difference of 180 degree then the field pattern produced due to isotropic power source is E I S O of phi equal to 2 E 0 sin of d r by 2 cos phi. Then we will apply the pattern multiplications to this. Therefore, E 0 equal to E 1 of phi is equal to k into i 1. That is, so this one. So this is the pattern you are obtaining from these two dipoles, and this is the pattern you are obtaining from the isotropic sources. Then we will apply the pattern multiplications. If you apply the pattern multiplications, here you have E0. Now this E0 is equal to k into i1. So in this equation, substitute E0 equal to k into i1, then we get E5 is equal to 2k i1 into sine of dr by 2 cos phi. And here, whatever the field you are getting, so this is the absolute field pattern. And the electric field is vertically polarized. And the peaks are obtained when phi is equal to 0 degree and 180 degrees with, and distance d is equal to lambda by 2. Hence, it is called as n fire pattern.
let us calculate the fields in the vertical plane the vertical plane pattern of a single lambda by 2 element is e1 of theta is equal to k into i1 in cos of pi by 2 cos theta divided by sin theta and now we are replacing each element by an isotropic source then the field pattern for the array due to isotropic source is given by e i s o of phi equal to 2 e 0 sin of dr by 2 sin theta. Now, using the pattern multiplication, e 0 is equal to e 1 of theta. In this equation, substitute e 0 is equal to e 1 of theta. So, then equation becomes e 0 equal to 2 e 1 of theta sin of dr by 2 into sin of theta. Then, here you are having e1 of theta. So, this e1 of theta is equal to k1 cos of pi by 2 cos theta divided by sin of theta. Substitute in this, then you are getting an equation. And this equation will give you the field pattern in the vertical plane.
now calculate driving point impedance so this is the driving point and these two are your antenna elements which are separated by distance d having a length lambda by 2 and we have to calculate the driving point impedance that is the impedance at this particular point p to this the emf applied at the terminal of element 1 is this is element 1 and this is element 2 we need to calculate the emf applied at element 1 and element 2 the emf applied at terminal of element 1 is v1 is equal to z11 into i1 plus z12 into i2 and the emf applied at the terminal 2 is v2 is equal to z22 into i2 plus z2 z12 into i1 then the current are of equal magnitude and out of phase therefore i2 equal to minus i1 because the current flowing through the element 1 is out of phase with the current flowing through the element 2 then we can write these equations as v1 equal to i1 into z1 on minus z12 and v2 equal to i2 into z22 minus z12 if this is the case then the terminal impedance of element 1 is z1 equal to v1 divided by i1 so this is equal to z11 minus z12 that is z1 equal to v1 divided by i1 then it is z11 minus z12 and the terminal impedance of element 2 is z2 equal to v2 divided by 2 this is equal to z22 minus z12 hence z1 equal to z2 this is equal to z11 minus z12 or you can write v1 divided by i1 is equal to v2 divided by i2 since i2 equal to minus i and v2 equal to minus v1 now with all these calculations the two elements are to be energized with an emf of equal magnitude and a phase of 180 degrees and this can be achieved by using a transmission line from the driving point p to one of the element that is this may be achieved by using a crossover transmission line from the elements to the transmission point p here we are taking the crossover connections and here also we are taking the crossover connections then for a spacing of lambda by 2 the terminal impedance of each element is z1 equal to r11 minus r12 plus j into x11 minus x12 this is equal to 86 plus j72 ohms
let us calculate the gain in field intensity. To calculate the gain in field intensity, first calculate the current. The current in each element for a power input P to the antenna array is given by. The current due to the signal applied at the point P in each element you can calculate. That is I1 is equal to root of P divided by 2 into R11 minus R12. The gain in field intensity is given by GF of phi into A divided by H omega equal to root of 2R00 divided by R11 minus R12 into sin of dr by 2 cos of phi. Take the absolute value of this. And for a spacing d equal to lambda by 2, then gf of phi a by h omega is equal to 1 by 3 into absolute value of sin of pi by 2 into cos phi. And for this case, for theta is equal to 0, and 180 degree, the pattern factor becomes unity. That is, when theta equal to 0 and theta equal to 180 degree, the pattern factor becomes unity. Then, the gain in field intensity, gf of theta into a divided by h omega is equal to root of 2 r0,0 divided by r11 minus r12 into absolute value of sin of dr by 2 into sin theta. Once you calculate the different values by substituting the different values of theta. Then if I draw the field patterns, so then the field pattern should look like this. So this is So this is horizontal plane pattern and this is vertical plane pattern. And as we are having the two antenna elements, so here you have one antenna element and this is where I have one antenna element. And the radiation due to this antenna element is this one and the radiation due to this ele antenna element is this one. And, and this is the radiation pattern we are getting, so due to lambda by to reference antennas and so this is the field pattern in the vertical plane and here you are having one antenna element and here having other antenna elements and this is the radiation pattern due to these antenna elements and this is the radiation pattern due to these antenna elements and so this is the radiation pattern and this is the radiation pattern we are getting due to the antenna arrays. This is all about the end fire arrays.
Now, let us consider an array of two driven lambda by two elements, general case. The general case means two array of elements who are feeding a signal with equal magnitude and any phase difference. Now, consider two lambda by two dipoles separated by distance d fed with a current of equal magnitude and any phase difference. Then the field pattern in the horizontal plane that is xy plane is e phi equal to 2k i1 into cos of psi by 2 where psi is equal to dr cos phi plus delta. Then the current in element 2 is i2 equal to i1 at an angle of delta or i1 equal to i2 at an angle of minus delta. So, this particular case is shown in this. Here you have one antenna element and here you have another antenna elements. So, they are separated by distance d and they are fed with a current of equal magnitude and any phase difference. Then the voltage applied at each element are that is element number 1 and element number 2 v1 equal to z11 into i1 plus z12 into i2. So, then i1 into z11 plus z12 into delta because i2 equal to i1 into delta. If you substitute i1 into delta here, then i1 I can take it as outside, then z11 plus z12 into delta. Similarly, v2 equal to z22 into i2 plus z12 into i1 and i1 equal to i2 into minus delta, if I substitute i1 equal to i2 into minus delta, then i2 becomes a common term, i2 will take it outside. Then v2 equal to i2 into z22 plus z12 at an angle of minus delta. Then the driving point impedance of elements are z11 equal to v1 divided by 1. So, this is equal to z11 plus z12 into delta. That is v1 divided by 1 is equal to z11 plus z12 into delta. Similarly, z2 equal to v2 divided by i2, this is equal to z22 plus z12 at an angle of minus delta.
Now we need to calculate the resistance at the driving point P. So that is the real part of driving point resistances R. R1 equal to R11 plus absolute value of Z12 into cos of 2 plus delta. And R2 is equal to R22 plus absolute value of Z12 into cos of 2 minus delta. Where whatever tau is there, where tau is the phase difference of the mutual impedance Z12. Here we have the Z12. The phase difference of this mutual impedance is a tau. Now, if Z12 is equal to R12 plus Jx12, then tau can be calculated as R tan of x12 divided by R12. Then we need to calculate so the power at the element 1 and the power at the element 2. So the power P1 at the element 1 is P1 is equal to I1 square into R1. And the I1 square as it is, this R1, we have calculated the R1 here. So this R1 you will write it here. So this is going to give the power at the point P1. Similarly, you have to calculate the power at the element 2. P2 is equal to I2 square into R2. I2 square, then R2, you have calculated the R2 in this equation. And substitute the values of R2. So this is going to give the power P2. Then we have to calculate the total power. So the total power P is equal to P1 plus P2. Therefore, P equal to substitute the values of P1 and substitute the values of P2 and try to take the common factors and try to simplify it. If you do this, then we will get P equal to so this value. So then after further simplification, we will get this and finally P equal to 2I1 square into R1 plus R1 2 into cos of delta. This equation will give you the total power at the driving point P. Now let us solve one problem. Complete the field pattern and find b width between the first null and half power b width for a linear uniform array of six isotropic point sources spaced at a distance of lambda by 2, the power applied with equal magnitude and the phase. The problem says that six antenna elements are there they are spaced at a distance of lambda by 2 and they are fed with equal magnitude and the phase. Then you have to calculate the entire field pattern and also calculate b width between the first nulls and the half power b width.
now to calculate the field patterns we need to calculate the peaks nulls and half power points let us calculate the peaks and from the given problem for d is equal to lambda by 2 because antenna elements are separated by distance of lambda by 2 then dr equal to 2 pi d by lambda so you'll go, this is equal to pi with delta equal to 0 that is phase difference equal to 0 then psi is equal to dr cos phi and this is equal to pi cos phi then the direction of the peaks are obtained from equating psi equal to 0 dr cos phi equal to 0 or phi is equal to cos inverse of 0 so this is equal to plus or minus 90 degree then you need to calculate the side loops then the field e is equal to sin of n psi by 2 divided by n psi by 2 then the possible peaks of the side loops are obtained from equating this equation equal to 1 that is sin of n psi by 2 divided by psi by 2 equal to 1 or n psi by 2 is equal to plus or minus 2k plus 1 into pi by 2 then phi equal to plus or minus cos inverse of plus or minus 2k plus 1 into dr divided by n into dr so this is equal to plus or minus cos inverse into plus or minus 2k plus 1 because this dr and dr will get cancelled only n will remain n is the number of array elements in the given problem the number of array elements are given as 6 then in this equation we are going to substitute the values of the k 0 1 2 3 like this if substitute the values of k equal to 0 then phi equal to plus or minus 80.4 and plus or minus 99.6 when k equal to 1 phi is equal to plus or minus 60 degree and plus or minus 120 degree and when k equal to 2 phi is equal to plus or minus 33.5 degree
Let's calculate the nulls. The nulls are given by sine of n psi by 2 equal to 0 or n psi by 2 is equal to plus or minus k pi. Then it can be written as n by 2 to call n by 2 dr plus pi is equal to plus or minus k pi. Then phi equal to plus or minus cos inverse of plus or minus 2 k pi divided by n into dr. This is equal to plus or minus cos inverse of plus or minus 2 k pi. n value is equal to 6 and dr equal to pi in the given problem. Then this is equal to cos inverse of plus or minus k divided by 3 because pi and pi will go and 2 divided by 6 equal to 1 by 3. In this equation, go on substituting the values of k, 0, 1, 2, 3, like this. When k equal to 0, then phi equal to plus or minus 90 degree. And this can be eliminated because at the 90 degree, we are having the maximum loops, that is the peaks. And k equal to 1, phi is equal to cos inverse of 1 by 3. So this is going to give us the values plus or minus 70.5 and plus or minus 109.5 degrees k equal to 2 then phi equal to cos inverse of 2 divided by 3 this is equal to plus or minus 48.2 degrees and plus or minus 131.8 degrees and k equal to 3 then phi is equal to cos inverse of 1 this is equal to 0 degree and 180 degrees after all these calculations now we need to draw the diagram that is the field pattern. Now from the calculations, we are obtaining the peaks at 90 degree and 270 degrees. And so this is the main loop at 90 degrees and 270 degrees. And you are having the nulls at 0 and 180 degrees. At 0 degree and the 180 degrees, we don't have anything. And we have the side of at 70.5 degree and 109 degrees. Then we have the side of at 70.5 degree and 109.5 degrees. And we have the side of at 48.2 degrees and 131.8 degrees. We have a side of at 48.2 degrees and 131.8 degrees. And we have no loops at 0 degrees and 180 degrees because you don't have any loops at 0 degree and 180 degrees because for this particular case we have a magnetism radiation in 90 degree and 270 degrees and no radiation in the zeros and 180 degrees. Similarly now, so what are the things you are getting at this particular point? So the same thing will be reflected here and what are the things you are getting at this point? the same thing will be reflected here. This is how you will get the final field pattern for a given problem.